When Jesus came and walked these streets, he invited you into the story. The story is bigger than politics, it's bigger than church differences, and it's bigger than us. It encompasses eternity, past, present, and future. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the message of hope that was reserved for the chosen people has now been extended to all people. So many of us have dedicated our lives to this message. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The good news went around the globe, and now it's time to bring it back to where it all began. Local ministries here have been doing effective work for decades, but globally, not many people know about it. Meanwhile, Christians are looking for ways to support Israel, but don't know where to start or who they can trust. This is why we exist. We want to bridge the gap. The Fellowship of Israel Related Ministries is a nonprofit based in the heart of Jerusalem. We connect believers around the world to Israel in a gospel centered way while strengthening and uniting local ministries here in the land. Through media, resources, tours, conferences, and more, we create on ramps for believers globally to encounter the heart of God for Israel, connect them to trusted local ministries, and engage the next generation to join the story. Millions of Christians visit annually, but few ever meet a local believer. We are changing that. We seek to build up the local body by serving over 60 ministries who are reaching the lost, meeting needs, and proclaiming the hope that can only be found through the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. We exist to strengthen and unite these ministries through relationships, practical training, and financial resources. One day, Israel will be transformed by the love of Jesus. Paul declared, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. We wanna see a generation of believers that lift up the arms of the Israeli body as we impact his people and transform our nation. The story continues, and you're invited to discover your part. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Life Mission Church. I am Pastor Jacob. It's such a pleasure to be with you here tonight, whether you're joining us online or you're here in the house. Just thank you so much for coming and just having a heart for the nations. And uh, about a year ago, it was a year ago last week, we showed a video, a movie, a full-length movie. It wasn't a short video. Uh, Sheep Among Wolves. How many here were here for that evening? All right. And it was an incredible evening, we had a great time, and this is not an annual event, I promise you. Uh, we had this little uh, pandemic going on, I don't know if you noticed, kind of foiled some of our plans, uh, but I wanna assure you, we wanna be intentional about gathering like this uh, more frequently to just really dig into what the Lord is doing in the nations and how we can participate as a church and as individuals. So next year's a new year, amen. Can I hear you say new year? Yeah. Who's ready for a new year? <laughs> so next year, once a month, we're gonna be meeting on a Monday evening and we're gonna be doing something just like this, something just focused again on what God's doing in the nations, how we can all participate, how we can be a part, and we just really wanna make it as accessible to you as possible, and it's not this big, unattainable thing. Uh, we think of the nations, and sometimes it can be overwhelming, uh, but God has a plan for each and every one of us. Even, even me, myself, if you don't know my story, the first time I walked into Life Mission Church, I was an alcoholic agnostic, and I was showing up with my girlfriend and our newborn baby, and, and I was a mess, and no one would have guessed at that time that I was gonna become a missionary, that I would be standing here as the mission pastor for Life Mission Church, uh, but God saw it in his will, like we see so many times in scripture, to take a weak vessel, a vessel that didn't look like it was fit for the job, and use it just to magnify his glory. And he has a story just like that for each and every person in this room, because this is not a special calling, it's not just special people that are called into the nations, but uh, it was his last words were to go into all the nations to all of his disciples. And we believe they were his last words for a reason because they're important, not just for the few, 
but for everyone. And it's not gonna look the same for everyone, though. It doesn't necessarily mean packing up your family and, and moving to Africa like we did, but it could be just being praying and giving and uh, being a host to missionaries when they come in town, just learning as much as you can about the nations. And, and again, this is just gonna be an outlet for that in these Monday nights. We're just gonna provide opportunities for you to engage. And even tonight, just partnering with the Spirit and praising and worshiping Him for and thanksgiving for all the things that He's doing and all the things that he is going to do. And so, again, the old missionary calling is we want the whole church taking the whole gospel to the whole world and just loving each and every person that's out there. And, it, and God just grows our heart and grows our heart. And I just saw that in my own life as we were called to Africa and went to a fairly Christian nation, then get called to an Islamic nation and learned to love Muslims. And in, in the middle of that Muslim nation even, getting a heart for Israel of all places. We were in a Muslim nation and just started praying and interceding for Israel and the conflict they have with Palestine. And uh, just on my time hop two years ago was this prayer meeting where God just broke my heart. Uh, and I saw my little girls praying for Israel and praying for Palestine at the same time. And just even this prophetic act where I had to stand up and be Israel and someone else was Palestine. And we were just apologizing to each other and praying blessings over one another. And it just loosened something in my heart and gave me a heart again for Israel and on top of the heart he'd already been given for Muslims and uh, just continues to grow that. And so tonight we have a special guest. She's gonna share a word with us, uh, Kayla Sprague. Um, so she, uh, she works for Firm Fellowship of Israel Related Ministry. So yeah, please give Kayla a hand. Are you guys excited to be here? It's so exciting to be able to gather to lift up the name of Jesus in person. And I know this year's looks different for all of us. And so I wanna just think back to where I was at last fall. You remember last fall when we could like go on road trips? You know, when we could like gather for movies. And um, so I got in my car because there was this movie, which some of you probably know and Jacob mentioned, called Sheep Among Wolves. How many of you guys have seen that movie? So there was this premiere happening in North Carolina and my friend had produced the movie. My friend, I met her once over burgers, but I was like, I am going to North Carolina. Now what I failed to do is to check the weather. Is, you know, I just got in the car, like I'm gonna go to this movie showing and I'm gonna show up and meet people and, and, and this hurricane hits. And in the middle of the storm, the place I was supposed to be staying was a few hours away. And there were a few people that invited a stranger into their home during a storm. Who knows that's biblical? That is, that is being the hands and feet and house of Jesus. And so a few of them are on this team, this band, this incredible expression of the heart of God. So would you please invite with me, welcome Mission House to the stage. Maybe, maybe. Okay, they're gonna come. So let me, let me, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Give it up for them again, again, again. So this is Jess. If you guys were here this weekend, then you got to be led in worship with um, some of this team. This is Jess and Kyle. They were the ones that took in the stranger that they had never met and let her stay in their guest room from a storm. And so over the past year, we've kind of developed this friendship. And let me tell you about these people. They love Jesus. And you know, there's those people and they like dress really cool and they're from Nashville or something. And, and they, they seem cool, but when you get to know them, then they're, they're not quite as deep as you would have thought they would be. I've been blown away time and time again by the character and by the tenacity to live life of love for Jesus over the long haul. Story after story of Taylor and Jess and different parts of their story. They started meeting together. It was called Feast and Feast where they would just eat, they'd feast on food, and they'd feast on the presence of Jesus. And so as we started to dream up, what could we do in 2020? How could we, we really create an atmosphere to feast on the presence of God? I couldn't really expect or imagine a better team to come here and lead with us. And the funny thing is, how many of you know that this year there's been a lot of division? In this world, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of hatred and animosity. Which side are you on? If you're not for me, then you're against me. And, and what, 
we actually started the year in is in northern Israel. I think there's a photo or two maybe. Um, we started the year, the year in northern Israel on the border between Syria and Israel and Lebanon. It was all three, I think. And so we're standing on the border between enemy lines, and that's why Jacob shared part of that, is the gospel of the kingdom is beyond every division and divide and border and religion and ethnicity, and he calls us to something greater. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read just a little passage in Ephesians 2 that's been so moving on my heart as I watch so much division and I watch so much really fear grip our hearts. And fear causes us to retreat. Fear blinds us to the fact that the other side's actually human because we can only see our own pain and our own perspective. So I just encourage you from wherever you're at, whatever you had going on today, if you'll just close your eyes because there's a man named Jesus who's actually written a story of peace. He's actually personified something beyond anything we can ask, think, or imagine in our earthly forms of peace. So close your eyes for a minute. We're gonna read through this as we prepare our hearts to worship. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made us both one and has broken down the flesh of the dividing wall of hostility. He has broken down the flesh of the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, therefore killing all hostility. He came and he preached peace to those that were far off and to those that were near. For through him, we both have access to the Spirit and to the Father. It says later on that in him, in him, think about this, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. So open your eyes for a second. Right now, what we're creating in this environment and what Mission House has stewarded time and time again, even in their name, Mission House, Everywhere you go on missions, there's a house you come back to at the end of the night. You celebrate wins, you, you bind wounds, you pray for the next day. You come in to be filled to be able to go out, right? And so tonight what we're doing is we're coming in and we're saying, Jesus, you know, you've called us to this ministry of reconciliation. Jesus, you, you've called me to be your hands and feet, but in it of myself, I don't really like those people. In it of myself, it's, it's kind of hard. And if you've ever tried striving for it, it's, it's even worse. Like you start seeing all of this humanity and this weakness inside of you. That's why I love so much of these lyrics. And as we're gonna be singing and worship songs, maybe you're not familiar with, let these lyrics write on the DNA of your spirit, a cry for identity that says, Jesus, you are God and I'm not. And actually I need to come to be filled. I need to come to behold you so that I can become like you. So Lord, we just ask you to come. We ask you to enter this place that you've actually made us in him, built together. You've built us together as a dwelling place for your spirit. Holy Spirit, come and have your way and minister to us so that we could be filled up and overflowing. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, it's so awesome to be here with you guys. I can't even, this is crazy because I can't even see all of you, but there's a lot of you. Oh, thank you for being here. I'm Taylor, this is Jess. We'll also introduce you to our friends um, back here, but man, it's been such an awesome weekend in Kansas City. We've gotten to be here all weekend hanging out with our friends some old friends like Kayla, some new friends here at Life Mission Church. And now we're so pumped to be here with all of you. And um, yeah, so what you can expect tonight. Well, I don't know, part, partially I'm not sure. <laughs> um, let's all you know, leave some room to be surprised in a, in a great way tonight. But uh, we just wanna sing together. You know, um, Jess and I uh, met like almost six years ago crazy uh and we started the worship night like Kayla mentioned and we are individual singer songwriters so we kind of were doing our own thing like this way and we met each other and realized there's so much similarity because we're kind of writing these like folk you know thoughtful hard on your sleeve emotional songs and then also we love Jesus and we love to lead worship and so we started the gathering and then we started writing these songs that really for lack of a better way of putting it are just meant to be sung together. So that's what we wanna do um, tonight, and the words will be up on the screen, and maybe for, I don't know, for some of you, for a lot of you, they'll all be new. Um, we hope that you just feel like you can jump in as much as you want to. Um, the other thing that we really hope is that, I would love for us, I know we're in like, a, we're in a big kind of church building, and it's awesome in here, I'd love for us, and we gotta stay spread out because we wanna honor each other, um, but I'd love for us to pretend uh, that we're in like a living room. So as much as you can kind of just pretend like, I'm just with my friends and we're just here. Uh, and, and really it's because we just want you to be comfortable. So like a lot of y'all are standing up, that's great. You can stand up the whole time. You can dance, you can clap, you can jump up and down if you want to. Or you can sit down, you can lay down, you can do whatever, do whatever that feels comfortable to you, especially as long as it honors the people around you. But uh, we just really want you to feel free. And we really are expectant and hoping that the Lord will give each of you, each of us what we need tonight, because that's what he does. And um, maybe for some of you, you haven't, sung in a room with people, I feel like I could, I'm, we might cry tonight just getting a beer with you. This is our only Mission House event in 2020, and uh, one and only right here. You guys are it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, guys, yeah, so um, I won't talk too much more, but we just know it's been a weird year, maybe for some of us a hard year, maybe for some of us not. It hasn't been that. Wherever you're coming from, just how good is it tonight to be together? It's really good. And we just wanna sing to Jesus. We want to um, be together. We wanna have fun. Um, man, I just hope we can all have an open heart tonight for whatever it is that God wants to do here in this room. So let's get started. Did I forget anything? No? Okay. Um, I haven't had a microphone in a while, so it just feels good to have. <laughs> just keep talking. <laughs> Um, okay, so we want to, we'll start out, I want to teach you this chorus. Um, it's, it's really easy because I'll sing something, then you sing something. Um, so, so I'll sing and then you guys can follow Jess, it'll go like, go like this. All that I need to know is that you are a good God, the yeah. maker of heaven calls me, you are a good
to him tonight. Exactly as you are. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Only you, God. Only in your arms, everything we need. Thank you, God. There is nothing left to do. To your arms from broken, I am ruined, I am lost if I do not. There is nothing left to do but run into your arms from I'm broken, I am ruined, I am lost if I do not. There is nothing left to do but run into your arms from I'm broken, I am ruined, I am lost if I do not. There is nothing left to do but run into your arms from I'm broken, I am ruined, I am lost if I do not. There's no hate.
Can I just be real with you that the testimony of each of our lives on the stage is that there's a lot that we do not know. There's a lot we are not sure of, but something happened in each one of our lives where we have been convinced of Jesus. And that is enough. In this world right now, I would say maybe more than ever, I am confused on a lot of things. I am unclear about things. There's a battle for truth going on, for sure. And I could get caught up in that, and I do get caught up in that, of like, what's true? What do I believe? What do I, I don't know. And it's just this crazy swirl of, I don't know. But I, <laughs> I believe in Jesus. There's something that has happened in my life that is so like gripped my heart that I can't turn away from that one thing. And that's what a lot of our songs are about, honestly. We try to keep it really simple, that we just love Jesus. This next song is totally the same theme of just like, man, we don't know a lot, but we're putting our hope in Him. And uh, just like the last one, it's super wordy and fast and fun, but just have a good time with us. Catch on with what you can and uh, yeah, especially if it is the echo of your heart, then sing it out with us. I see there's so much that I don't know, but I know you, but I know you, and there's so much that I don't understand, but I have seen your goodness.
There's um, a phrase that Jesus says. Uh, he says it so many different times. And if there are any Bible scholars in the room, I might get these a little bit wrong. You know, but the heart of it is <laughs> still the same. Uh, he says, take heart. And Jesus says, take heart to people when they are really afraid. Like when he's, um, the disciples are in the boat in the storm and he's kind of walking across and he looks like a ghost. I mean, can, can you imagine a ghost walking toward, something that looks like a ghost walking toward you and he says, take heart. Um, he says it to the woman who touches his cloak because she's been sick for years and years and years and years and years and years. He says, take heart, your sins are forgiven. Uh, he says it when the, the, um, there are all the friends that are bringing their friend to Jesus, the paralyzed man, and they lower him through the roof, take heart. So really people who kind of find themselves like, I don't know, uh, on their last straw or like, you know, at the bottom or in fear, like, at, like imagine the depth of the emotion you would be in in any of those situations. That's who he's talking to. And he says it again to his disciples. He's talking about, you know, he's about to leave them. Or that's what they, he says, 
I'm going to go away from you for a while. And he tells them, in this world, he gives them two promises. The first one is, in this world, you will have trouble. That's not really very good news, is it? No. But the, he says it. He promises us. In this world, you will have trouble. And the second promise, but take heart, because I've overcome the world. He says, take heart, I've overcome the world. And I think the only reason Jesus can say that is because he went to the bottom of death and defeated it. And he died and rose again victorious so that when we experience trouble, when we experience death, when we experience pain, it never has to end in that. But actually the promise of God is, I'll work everything for your good, for the good of those who love me. It's nothing ends in death, but for you, everything will end in life. And that's the promise of, of Jesus to us. And I think, I just, you know, I have found myself so many times in my life uh, a scaredy cat, a fearful person. And as I got older, the fears got bigger and more, whatever, sharper teeth. <laughs> uh, but I still find in Jesus, a friend who says, take heart, I've overcome the world. And that's what I, he says to you tonight. Sweet. 
years ago we um we went on a family vacation and my uh my mom took us on this big trip and we were outside around a campfire and one of the best things about my mom is that she is very spiritual always kind of on that page when everyone else is, isn't and so we're all around this campfire um just roasting marshmallows and like doing normal stuff and my mom is just like staring at the sky full of stars going, guys, we will never, ever see the end of his goodness. And I'm just like, okay, mom. <laughs> and I kind of go on with whatever I was doing and, uh, you know, hanging out with my brothers and whatever. And then a couple weeks later, I sit down at the piano and for whatever reason, that moment comes back to my mind and I think of um, my mom saying that and how significant it was because um, my mom has walked through a lot of trials in her life, even just the past couple of years, the end of her marriage and the death of both of her parents all in like a really short amount of time. And like, if anyone just could just stop saying that, uh, she might have the right, you know? Uh, to have given up on that. But here she is, proclaiming it even still, the goodness of God, no matter what we face. And so um, that's definitely something we wanna encourage you in tonight, is whatever you're walking through, um, he's in it with you. Uh, he has come, and that's what's so fun about this season. Yes, it's fun to like, you know, sing Christmas songs and lights and trees and, presence and all of that, but like, let's not miss the fact that God himself made himself like us to understand us and walk with us. And that's the beauty of what we believe, that he's fully come to understand us and walk with us. And um, so he's with you tonight in whatever you're facing. He's so good. He has so much for you inside of it. So I just kind of dare you tonight or uh, invite you tonight to just sing of his goodness, to put your faith again in him carrying you through whatever you're in. Um, it's a really simple chorus. I'll teach it to you real quick and then we'll sing this together. It goes like this. We will never see the end. We will never see the end of your goodness. We will never see the end, we will never see the end of your
going to sing uh, a couple more songs together and um, hey before we do that because it'll we'll kind of go into it tonight and um, just worship a little more so before before we uh, get into that man I would be this next song we're going to sing is about the dream of God really and I just, I want to thank uh, Life Mission Church who we've been with this weekend and for hosting us, for being the most hospitable. This is a church that believes in the dream of God and is about bringing that to pass uh, in the world. So thank you, Life Mission. Thank you, Kayla, Haley, Zach, and the whole crew, really, that just like, they welcomed us like family. I have never experienced that. Just like, we just showed up like new people and Anyway, they've been the kindest to us, so thank you so much. And um, thank you. I do, I feel like we really want to introduce you to our friends up here, Jess and I. Um, we love these people, and we've been playing music t- together for a little while now. And um, over there on the keys, Mr. Ben Evans, everyone. Just go ahead and like celebrate him. Whenever he starts playing piano, I forget to. I forget to do my part because I'm like, I just want to listen to that. (laughs) It's so good. Um, Man, we love Ben. Over here, back here on the bass, on uh, bass and then also synth bass, this is Hitoshi Yamaguchi. Hitoshi. Back here on the drums, bringing those beats in. (laughs) I don't know what I'm saying. That's Dustin Miller right here. Celebrate Dustin with us. Do you want to do the next one? Sure. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, my husband, Kyle Langdon, on electric guitar. Oh, man, we also want to thank our friend Gabe back there running oh, sound. Yeah. Woo. And lyrics, all of you back there, thank you so much because, man, that's a big deal. And so we've just had such a blast doing this. Um, 
All right, well, we're gonna sing, like I said, we'll sing a couple more songs and um, we are just, again, so thankful to all of you for coming, for singing with us, for being like, I just feel it. I can't see all your faces, but I can feel that you're with us and that just means a lot. We've been so like separated from one another this year. And so just the gift of togetherness, I cannot get over it, so thank you. And um, in the book of Revelation, which is a book about a dream, uh, Jesus says these words, he says, behold, I'm making all things new. And even Kayla gave us that beautiful, just welcome tonight and, and told us we, were, we wanna behold Jesus. And the thing about beholding is, it's much more than looking. Like if I just said, look over there, you know, like that's one thing, but to behold is to really take it in. And uh, we wanna behold tonight. We wanna really have our eyes open and not just our physical eyes, although I think that's a good thing to do walking around the world, but God has given you a different kind of eyes. He's given you eyes that can see and dream and imagine, eyes that can look at a situation and see not just what is, but what could be, what will be. That's, those are the eyes he's given me, you, all of us together. And so we actually get to, when we sing, when Jesus says, I'm making all things new, here's the part we didn't know yet, that he was gonna use us to do that. We don't just sit back and watch Jesus. Yeah, we get to like go with him, which has really been like the gift of our lives is to just go, okay, I wanna play, you know, like let, let's do it. So we wanna sing this song uh, with you. And I just, I invite you really during this time to think about your world, like yes, this globe we're in, but really like your world, your neighborhood, your friends, your work, your school, your family, your own life. And just like I, we invite you to dream with God while we sing this, behold, behold, I'm making all things new. There is not one, not even one hopeless situation out there. Um, we believe that.
soul from doom, my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the land of the living. I love you, Lord, for you have delivered me. I love you, Lord, for you have delivered my soul from doom, my feet from stumbling. tonight church I know he was blessed I know we blessed the father's heart tonight it was really an amazing evening and this is just a taste and in Revelation 7 John paints this picture just a little bit like tonight but it's a countless number rallied around the throne room in heaven every tongue every tribe every nation crying praises to our creator. And not only do we get to be a part of it then, we get to be a part of making it happen. And we did that in this room tonight because what we lose here on earth is loosed in heaven. And something was loose tonight. So thank you all so much for joining us and just pouring your hearts out to the Father. Thank you, Mission House, it was incredible. You really did bless us and bless the Father. 
If you'd like to meet, meet the band, all of them, they did so amazing, so talented. If you'd like to meet them afterwards, they will be in the lobby. They have a merch table. Check that out for sure. Uh, let's make sure we do practice our social distancing, wear our masks. There's hand sanitizer out there. Let's do what we can to love and respect one another. Uh, if you're at home watching online, they have a website, wearemissionhouse.com. Check that out. Um, Firm or Fellowship of Israel Related Ministries is also going to have a table out there. And then their website is firm.org.il for Israel.il. Uh, and then, again, we'll be doing this once a month in 2021. So that first one is going to be January 25th. Uh, right here again, and we'll be just doing something different every month, but it'll always be globally focused. We just want to invite you all uh, online or coming in person, wherever you are, wherever you call your church home. Really, this is about the church coming together to bless the nations. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this incredible evening. We thank you for uh, bringing these ministries together. We thank you for bringing these people into your house. We thank you that you have not asked us to work for you, but with you, Lord. We thank you that there's nothing too small for you to keep your eye upon, for you to be involved in, but you also hold the universe in your hand. We thank you that you're here for each and every one of us and you're here for each and every nation. And we pray, Lord, that you would just stir hearts, those at home, those watching online, those here in this room. Holy Spirit, show them what, our, what their part is to play. Show me what my part is to play. Lead us, guide us, give us vision and direct our steps. Bless us as we go to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good night. <laughs>